song to usher in that praise during this worship service.
And I'm, I know I'm like uh, Brother J.C. over there because he's brought us through many dangers towards this thing. Yes. But he keeps right on blessing us. Yes. Our scripture today comes from Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. When you have it, say amen. Amen. It reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. O gracious, merciful, and mighty Father, We've come this morning, dear Lord, with bowed heads and humble hearts. Yes. Giving you thanks and praise, dear Lord, because you are worthy of it all. Yes. Thank you, dear Lord, for another day's journey thank you, Lord. in this thank thing we call life. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for waking us this morning. Thank you. Closing our right mind with yes. the youth of our limbs, dear Lord, to come out once again to the house of prayer. Yes. Father, we thank you for our pastor, dear Lord, this thank morning. You. Thank you, dear Lord, for blessing him with health and strength, dear Lord, to come out of here too. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you for every beating heart and every step that was made to come into this place this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, as I stand before your people, let me be but let me be but the bucket through which your word is poured out of, dear Lord. Mold me and shake me, dear Lord, and use the words that you have given, Lord. And if there's anything that I wish to say, dear Lord, and it's different from what you have, Lord, please just close my mouth and speak. Because we have come this morning to hear your word and not those of James Spencer. Father, bless us now. Keep us and give us strength and peace and open our hearts and minds. And these blessings we all ask now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now I'm giving honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes. Our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Yes. Yes. To our pastor, the Sister Dawn, to Reverend Lills, Sister Lills and the family, to all that have come out this morning to make up this congregation of China Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. And to all churches that are open yes. in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. And last but not least, to my sweetheart over there Amen. who keeps me straight. Amen. And as Pastor Donald like to say, my nurse, my bodyguard, my friend, because she's always there for me, and to each and every one of you. Now this morning, I have a few questions I'd like to ask. Do you have a price? Can you be bought? Is there something that you can be offered that will prompt you to compromise your basic principles and beliefs? In the safety and security of a fellowship and worship service, many believers immediately say no. They can never be bought and they can't be compromised. You know how we are. No, you can't buy me. There's an old saying that says, every man has his price. And you can but come up to it. That saying acknowledges that some believers will be a uh, little immoral when you start talking prices because then they start thinking about, okay, what would I take? Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's a weakness. Yeah. And there is, a, you know, something that all of us wish we had, but we, would we give up our belief and faith, our moral standards and all, to achieve it? Well, unfortunately, we've seen this principle paid out 
played out many times before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes loved ones, close friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. We have seen businesses that were willing to endanger the lives of millions, millions of people by reducing the quality of their product. Mm -hmm. Like baby cribs, mm -hmm. toothpaste, mm -hmm. just to reach and, re and, and line their pockets. Mm -hmm. We've seen workers exposed to lead poisoning in toys mm -hmm. and whatnot that have been imported from other countries that don't have the same standards. Mm -hmm. We've seen even the these local FEMA trailers that they put out here after the, the hurricanes, mm -hmm. lined with asbestos and everything else, yeah. causing people, you know, lie. We've seen our military personnel subjected to all kinds of chemicals mm -hmm. because of us company sought a lucrative contract with the Department of Defense that was worth billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the little fellow, we just gonna get out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We seen men and women become spies for our nation mm -hmm. in return for an envelope stuffed with cash. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was on the news just a few weeks ago. Yeah. And the one that's going around so much today. Mm -hmm. We've seen politicians that vote to relax dangerous rules that endanger the life yeah. of all the constituents each and every day to continue to receive, in order to continue to receive donations from their wealthy benefactors. There are men who literally sell their souls to the devil to achieve fame and wealth. They begin with lofty ideas until they're often the zero behind a single digit of their choice. We've seen young women who exchange their bodies for rent money, mm -hmm. clothing, mm -hmm. or they say in the drug trade, a 50 cents bag. Mm -hmm. We've seen men become gigolos mm -hmm. and, and for the same reason. Mm -hmm. We've seen students trade their integrity and buy grades or buy answers to test to get out of school. We've seen people buy these CDs off the street that have been ripped from some other vault CD and sold as a profit to whoever is selling them because they want to make a buck. A person can only be bribed if that person has a price. Yeah. A person who offers a bribe assumes that each person has a price, mm -hmm. but it has to be offered to be discovered. In a bit of self-righteousness, many of us claim that we have no price, mm -hmm. but if the opportunity presented itself, many of us would learn something about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now what if somebody suddenly came through that back door over there and offered $10 to a person if they would get up and say they didn't believe in Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't have many people that get up for $10. Mm -hmm. What if they offered $100? Mm -hmm. You see people start looking around. <laughs> but what if they offered $10? Mm -hmm. You might look up and see some people you didn't really think was going to be there. You know, you know that finger? They might think, you know, I could pay my rent and buy some groceries. But uh, <laughs> but uh, when you ask the question in your mind, how much would the offer need to be before you move? As I said earlier, you've already named your price. Mm -hmm. You said $1 million to get up and do that? No, but now they offer 10 I might think about it. <laughs> In 2009, Cameron Diaz starred in a movie entitled The Box. Now, in this movie, Diaz was facing financial trouble with giving the option to push a button on a black box that would deliver to her door anonymously. She was later told that if she pushed the button, it would receive, she would receive a briefcase of one million in cash. However, somewhere in the world, someone but the, someone in the world would die if she pushed that button. 
she didn't know this person, so hey, what is? I get a million bucks just to push a button. Are we like that? Well, I don't know who it's gonna be. Who's gonna be hurt for you? So I just go ahead and do it. You've already compromised your belief and your moral. And she had to make a choice. And given that choice, would you push the button? Of course, you have to answer to yourself. That seems like a moral challenge, then we should realize that there are people who are making this decision on a daily basis. Yeah. Just think about the, the uh, North Korea and their rockets and everything. How can you stand there and think about the atrocity that you will create punching this button? Well, I won't just say that North Korea, we can have the same thing going on in the United States. You stand there and push this button, knowing that on the other end of that button is a dangerous weapon that could cause mass casualties somewhere in the world. And just because you push that button and that rocket or whatever is aimed in a direction, it doesn't mean that the wind is not going to change the trajectory of it. It may not hit in the pinpoint location that you thought it was going to hit in. So you just get rid of a whole bunch of people. Now, what kind of conscience would you have? <laughs> the question is, shall I trade my financial stability for the sake of my family just to make this kind of decision? Shall I risk my future by selling drugs or robbing a corner store? If it came to your salvation, what could separate you from the love of God? How much would it take to get you to stop going to worship, reading your Bible, or assembling with saints if you were offered a large check that would increase each week on the condition that you don't attend a worship service, read the Bible, or acknowledge God in any way? Say you start off with $1 million this week, next week is $1.5 million, and it goes up every week. Would you stop coming to church, reading your Bible, or acknowledge that God is still God? I don't think I don't think so. Well, I know so. I wouldn't, because no amount of money can pay for the salvation of the atoning blood that Jesus Christ died for each and every one of us. We are here because of Him, not because of how much we have, because we have nothing. All of everything was created by God. Amen. And we are just using it Amen. while we are here. Yes. There was once a play entitled The Devil and Daniel Webster mm -hmm. in which a man made a deal with the devil. He offered his soul for seven years of prosperity. Mm -hmm. But the devil made him a better deal. He said, I give you ten. Mm -hmm. But soon after, the devil came to collect. You know, there's a, uh, a show on TV used to call Cops. What you gonna do when he comes for you? What you gonna do when he comes for you? The devil always come and collect. That's why we are to stay close to God and never trade anything for our faith in him. As Christians, we are resolved to make no bargain with the devil that will separate us from the love from the Lord. Like Paul, we stand firm on the words of Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, this, I don't think I gave you a subject for this, but it is a bargain with the devil. A bargain with the devil. And the text actually focuses on Judas. As we strike a bargain with Christ's enemies, as he strikes a bargain to, uh, with Christ's enemies to betray him. Now, Judas was a member of a revolutionary group that wanted to fight against the Romans 
and return Israel to a free and independent state. Mm -hmm. Many scholars believe that Judas was frustrated that Jesus would not take advantage of his immense popularity to mobilize the people into an army that could defeat the nation's enemy and establish the kingdom of heaven at the same time. He was even more frustrated that they believed when he heard Jesus speak about turning the other cheek and loving your enemy. Mm -hmm. He didn't think that was right. There are generally two schools of thought when it comes to Judas' motivation. Some scholars believe that Judas went to the religious leaders hoping that Christ's arrest would push Jesus into action and motivate the people to revolt. It was not a matter of money with Judas because the 30 pieces of silver was only worth about $15. <laughs> he betrayed Christ for what he believed to be a higher cause, the freedom of the people. Now, another group of scholars believe that Jesus was simply greedy. Yeah. They say he saw an opportunity to profit person from Jesus' arrest, and he seized it. He took the moment. This was the same Judas who complained when a woman took oil from an alabaster box and anointed Jesus' feet. He thought that was a waste of good oil that could have been sold. Judas was the keeper of the disciples' funds and had a mercenary interpretation of nearly everything. We can use this for this and we can use this for this all the while collecting and spending. And even the answer, Judas did not expect Christ to be crucified. He expected him to use his divine power to free himself and liberate the people. When he didn't when Jesus didn't do that, Judas gave back the money but found that he would not be excused from his body. So what did he do? He hanged himself. When Jesus began his ministry, just the opposite of Judas' situation happened, Jesus fasted and was tempted. The devil appeared to him and offered him not one but three bodies. Each of the bodies sought to tap what the devil thought would be human vulnerabilities mm -hmm. because he thought that Jesus had a price. Yeah. But Christ turned down each one choosing to depend on the promise of God for the salvation of mankind. You see, some people are chasing the devil to make a bargain. Mm -hmm. One of the new things about this text is that the religious leaders did not have to come to Judas. He came to them. Yeah. There are many today who are doing the exact same thing. The devil, in some cases, probably didn't have us in his radar until we went to him trying to make a deal. Yeah. When two people commit adultery, it's not like that both of them approached each other at the same time. One made the first move and the other one accepted. Mm -hmm. Just like the devil. There are many today who are not being chased down by the devil, they are chasing the devil down, <laughs> trying to make a quick dog. <laughs> three, corner, three corner drug dealers just stand on the corner with that merchandise. The, the, the word now is you don't call them street corner drug dealers anymore. They call them street pharmacists. Street, and they just stand on the corner with their merchandise and people come to them and make a deal. The man who sells hot videos and CDs just walks around with a bag full of ripped CDs. And people are chasing them down just to buy some of these cheap CDs. You go to, go to the, 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 uh, the record store, that CD may cost you you know, 15, 20 bucks. And this guy said, oh, I'll let you have that one for five. It's the one you've been looking for. <laughs> he didn't have to chase you down. You knew he had this, this counterfeit stuff. If this show us anything, it should reveal to us that when you run to the devil, he won't turn you down. No. Oh, he thinks he's got another one. It's like that old song said, it's me again, Marvin. <laughs> Jesus made one deal with the religious leaders, but the devil presented Jesus with three. Turn stones into bread and satisfy his human needs yeah. to worship the devil and free himself from being plagued by the devil's plots and tricks that will follow him all through his ministry. Yeah. To throw himself off the side of a mountain in full view of thousands of people below who witnessed when. God sent angels to catch him before he hit the ground. Mm -hmm. All through the temptation would have jump started Jesus' career with popularity, fame, and yeah. certain world power. Mm -hmm. 
there would be no doubt that he would be the one true Messiah. Yeah. Because he would be the one man who could turn stones into bread and be rescued mm -hmm. by angels dispatched from God. He could change the world from such a position. He could order governments to follow the rule. Outlaw hypocrisy and open the floodgates of opportunity for thousands. But he was presented with a quick opportunity to do anything. Yeah. But what wouldn't do the one thing that he came to do. Mm -hmm. And that's obey the will of the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't come for himself. No. He came because of who sent him. Yeah. And in his dying breath, he says, not my will, but thine. I didn't come to do this for fame and fortune. But you know the one thing about it all? He followed God's will. Yeah. And there's not a more pronounced name in all of the world today than that of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Never went to a seminary. Never had a, a, a true following of people that was educating him about anything. But he has changed yeah. hundreds and millions and billions of hearts throughout a lifetime. And it ain't stopped yet. His fame is greater than anything that yeah, Satan yeah. could have ever offered. Thank you, Lord. And his teachings are universal. Yeah. Yes. Jesus refused all of Satan's temptation. And went alone when we around. Mm -hmm. It was a way of sacrifice and pain. Yeah. But it provided what the Father sent him to do. The devil wants to make a deal with each believer today. Amen. He's trying his best to give us our, give him our soul, but we should not fall free to his promises. Because the only true promises and the one that you can depend on comes from God. Amen. And he gives us promises in, as he said in, in Malachi, he never changed. He never changed. Finally, my brothers and sisters, why we are some running to the devil and others are being propositioned by the devil himself. We need to maintain our trust in the promises of God. Amen. We can't maintain our, prom our trust in God. Mm -hmm. We have lost already. Bargaining with the devil are fruitless because they usually end without destruction in some way or other. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. And mount up on wings as the eagles. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. And walk and not faint. God has proven time and time again that if we yes. seek Him first, yes. that He will make a way yes. for us. The yes. same promises that God made in biblical times still apply today because God is still the same. Yes. When the devil tries to make a bargain, we should tell him to get thee behind me because we have decided to keep trusting in the Lord. Yes. We trust in the Lord because history has shown that. Those of us who trust in the Lord face the unknown fear without fear. We trust in the Lord because saints who have trusted him have been rewarded with answered prayers of few earthly presence in heavenly glory. Mm -hmm. We are not by ourselves. No. Noah trusted the Lord and he brought him through the great flood. Yes, he did. Abraham trusted the Lord and he showed him the lamb in the bush. Yes. Ruth trusted the Lord and she found happiness while gleaning in the field. Yes. Moses trusted the Lord and he led Israel out of bondage. Yes, Daniel trusted the Lord and he protected him from the lion's den. Yes. The three Hebrew boys mm -hmm. trusted the Lord and he shielded them in the fear of punishment. Yes, I don't need a bargain with the devil because if I'm sad, the Lord will be my fountain yes, of joy. Yes, yes. If I am at fault, the Lord will be a stronghold of forgiveness. Yes. If I'm weak, the Lord will be my pillar of strength. Yes, he will. If I'm discouraged, the Lord will be my pool of inspiration. Mm -hmm. If I am defeated, the Lord will be my crown of victory. Yes, he will. In darkness, he will be my light. Uh -huh. If I'm lonely, the Lord will be my friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm helpless, the Lord will be my help. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder the songwriter declares, 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. The same man that was nailed to an old root cross. Hold on to this hand. He died out on Calvary. Early Sunday morning. He rose from the dead. And all power in heaven and earth. Hold to his hand. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am warm, through the storm, through the Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me on when my way grows in precious Lord. Linger me when my way. It's almost gone. Hear me out. Hear my call. Hold my hand. Let's come. Precious Lord, take my hand. Leave me home. Now, there will be little one. That have been thinking about making a deal, deal with the devil. I beseech you this morning to think about the benefits of serving the true and living God. Amen. Come this morning and offer your soul as a living sacrifice to the only true and living God. Amen. Because as the scripture says, Praise the Lord and forget not all his benefits. It's greater than anything Satan has to offer. Can we see one come this morning? My. If all hearts are satisfied, you better speak up because I can do it again. <laughs> I can start another one. If all hearts are satisfied, all right, amen. Let us stand and pray to our God. Give them praise and honor. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you. We thank you for sustaining our hearts and minds, dear Lord. Yes. That we can look up to you, dear Lord, knowing that you are God. Yes. And you are God all by yourself. Yes. We thank you, dear Lord, for what you, you do, you. what you have done, yes. and what you will do in our lives. Yes. Because we know that you are always here yes. with us. Thank you never left us and never forsake us. Father, we just thank you for this word this thank morning. You. Thank you, dear Lord, for opening our hearts and minds that somewhere in this message this morning, dear Lord, somebody had a seed planted. Yes. And Father, we just thank you for our thank pastor you. this morning. Yes. Thank you for his health and strength yes. for him to be back here this morning. Yes. Now, Father, as we prepare now to leave this place, but never your presence. We ask your Holy Spirit to indwell in each and every one of us, dear Lord, and guide us through this day and each step along this journey. Keep us in your care. Protect us from all the evil and dangers of this world. And keep our feet in the right path, dear Lord, walking into your righteousness. We ask these in all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen.